that one looks decidedly better. Ready yourself. I will be waiting. Hi, Cicerin here with another video and today I'm going to make a video that is going to detail what is good mechanics to do in high tier maps and what are good mechanics to do in low tier maps. So lately I've been doing a lot of essence farming in low tier maps and expedition farming and people have been asking me why am I not doing this in tier 16s and why are essences good in tier 1 maps. So I figured I would make a quick video where I just talk about every mechanic, how it works and whether it's good in a high tier map or whether it's good in low tier maps. So if you look at Essence, Essence is particularly strong in low tier maps, even tier one maps, and it doesn't get any benefit at all from going to tier 16 maps. Now, obviously when you unlock the Essence in the map, you are fighting a rare monster. So whatever that drops will have the item level of the monster, right? So if it drops fractured gear or, you know, anything like that, that would be great if it's in a tier 16. However, other than that, there is no benefit of fighting Essences in tier 16 at all and you're able to get a large amount more essence per hour by doing low maps. So what I do, and you still want to go as high as possible where it doesn't slow you down. So for me, I'm doing tier four maps. There's not going to be a reasonable difference for me between tier four and tier one. And then I have divination cards that I can drop for like Brother's Gift. So I'm farming Cemetery and Tropical Island. And those are the two maps I'm flicking between now. And then I focused on making a very fast build. So let's have a look at that real quick. Right now I'm on a very popular fast build called Corrupting Fever. And um, I can just like open up a map real quick here and show you. And we can even throw in a white map and I can do essence on the map device. We can talk about that in a sec. And I have all the essence nodes, every single one. You can get even faster than what I am right now, but this is a pretty zoomy character. Especially seeing as it's like, I just started it, it's only 87. The main thing I want to do now to get my speed up is to get a lot more damage. Because um, I don't really have that much. That's one of Corrupting Fever's big problems. Now I can proc my Adrenaline. But it would be so much nicer to proc the Adrenaline in one craft. But either way, you can see that I'm just like quickly running through the map. And I'm basically just like killing the main meaty bit and finding all the essences. So there's at least three essences, there can be more. And the most essence I got in one map yesterday, I think I got like 10 deafenings and like 20, 30 shriekings in one single map. And I got a lot of lightning coil cards, which I need for double corruption. So essence is an example of a mechanic that is incredibly strong. That's because in high tier maps, you're not getting higher essences or better essences. You're getting the exact same essences in tier 1 than in tier 16. They won't roll better, They're, there's no improvement at all. So that's one of the main ones. Another mechanic that I'm currently farming is Expedition. And there are benefits to Expedition in high tier maps, but it is also insanely dangerous. Um, so pairing Essence with Expedition is actually really nice. I'm getting a lot of the reroll things. I don't use Quentin. I'm also getting a lot of logbooks. However, this is a downside. The logbooks are obviously better at high tiers. You will get a lot more artifacts and stuff like that. But uh, I have found that I'm getting a very large benefit by running them at low tier maps. And that's because the vendors are entirely based on your level. So with a level 90 character, if I click reroll here, I will be getting item level 85 to 86 ghastly eyes. I will be getting loads of divine orbs. And I have like the extreme archaeology thing. So it's just I click once, I hover over quickly, make sure I haven't like made it immune. There's like a button down here you can hover over to see what the mods are going to be. As long as I can kill it, I pretty much always do it. This is a really, really important thing too, because you kind of want to pair fast mechanics with each other. Like these are, these are mechanics where I will both of them just very quickly go through them. Whereas another example of a slow mechanic would be ritual. Ritual would like almost triple the time that it takes me to go through the maps, maybe even more because they are, they are so fast that I'm not even fully finishing the map. And then another thing I had for a while that I could throw in is you can have intelligence gathering and kill the boss in the map. Now you're getting loads of safe houses popping up. You will just like get a bunch of Katarina's. So if Diadem sells for a lot, then that's actually pretty good to farm. In the previous map, we also saw Abyss. So we can talk about that. Abyss is not particularly good in low level maps. I'd say that is a better mechanic in high tier maps. And also I'll spec into. That is one of the mechanics I usually ignore if I'm not spec into. Depends a little bit how desperate I am for the um, 
abyssal depths right now i am a little bit because i do need the belt later on when i feel like i have most things i would not do that same with legion uh legion is really good to farm in low tier maps but again at a penalty uh both both legion and abyss have like you know you kind of do care about the rares and the things they drop and um the incubators and stuff would be quite low item level but generally especially on hardcore what i do when farming legion is i'll do like a tier two or a tier five dunes be fully spiked into it and just blast through with all the nodes uh, especially emblematic and then i'm getting a lot of emblems that's what i'm going to do today and i'm just going to get a lot of these so we can get uh legion jewels for me and steel mage heist heist is really really good but it is better at high maps um because there does seem to be item level gating on um the blueprints and getting focus and simple i mean that's the replicas and stuff i don't think there is so i've had good things like replica ember wake etc which opens up a lot of builds for me on solo cell phone so having that it's, it's also a very fast mechanic right it's a thing that i just click i get rogue markers but definitely something i want to keep in high level maps incursion um absolutely something you do in low tier maps and, and kind of whatever but this is a bit of a slow one it will make it a lot slower so i really need a corruption chamber so i have these nodes to make my missions more uh, efficient these two to like upgrade more but that's mostly to farm double corruptions so i usually prefer that in low tier maps there's there's no benefit to high tier maps there all i want is corruption chambers now, a thing that's very, very bad in low tier maps, but very good in high tier maps, and also a pretty quick mechanic, not, it's kind of like a medium length mechanic, would be Harvest. Um, harvest, I very rarely bother with. I'll like try to keep 500 or 1000 of each juice uh, when I'm in low tier maps. But other than that, I will very rarely do it at all. Um, there's a few things people don't know about Harvest. If there's no highlighted names, uh, there, it's kind of like a blue highlight. And I'm not talking about the base field being blue. This can happen on yellow or pink or red, whatever the fields are as well. But those are guaranteed to drop juice. So let's say that I have a yellow field and a purple field and none of the like, monster names are blue. I don't, I don't engage with that field at all. I skip it to save time. The Harvest, very good at higher tier maps because I think it, it's honestly not sure either tier 11 plus or tier 14 plus you can get the tier 4 beasts so tier 14 plus i always go into harvest and worst case scenario if i feel like i'm in a hurry and i want to be efficient i at least just check for a tier 4 beast and then leave or maybe i check for a tier 4 beast or that there's three of the uh, largest beasts that like guarantees um the juice and then i leave but uh very worth it at high tier maps very not worth it at low tier maps bestiary uh incredibly worth it at low tier maps most of the really good ones can be gotten on low tier map so if you want imprint beast or split beast both of these are in tier one the only thing that matters that is tier 13 plus is the tiger tiger uh and the crab boss is 75 plus so yeah i uh i think you're generally pretty okay to do that in low tier maps blight i don't think i would do blight in less than tier 10 maps so i think i think it's somewhere between tier 12 and 14 wouldn't surprise me if it's tier 14 for gold oils so i would not do this mechanic in like tier 10s and below tier 10 is okay because at least you have carcass and you can probably get silver you can at least get black oil i've had that uh maybe silver and opalescent and for blight not only is it okay that you keep this in like high tier maps i really try to do it in like close-knit maps carcass is really good core etc core might be the best one um versus uh dunes would be the worst one that's because it opens up loads of different pump locations and you won't stack the blight reward whereas in core you could get 12 of one lane and then you get 12 blight rewards so you could get as many as like five or six blight maps in one map anything that just passively adds monsters to your map like um shrines and storm boxes honestly they're really good everywhere but those are something i prefer to have in high tier maps because there's something that doesn't slow me down and just a bunch of extra monsters for more xp more drops etc harbinger i say harbinger is pretty okay and low and high tier maps it's more of a ssf thing for farming i don't know if people farm it that much for profit on uh softcore obviously i don't play softcore a lot definitely something i prefer in high tier maps i really like to have a build that ignores proximity shields for harbinger and uh, the reason i like it in high tier maps is so many rares that you actually do get a lot of fractured bases and stuff so if you want 83 fractured bases or 85 fractured bases sorry uh harbinger is the way to go there in high tier maps breach absolutely both in low tier and high tier maps if you just want to spam farm it and go through them quickly low tier maps might be the play beyond as well um shouldn't have any difference in lower high tier maps obviously it will spawn more rare monsters which is good for the fractured things but if you are looking for just the tainted currency low tier maps should be fine uh delirium depends i would say pretty much here it is 
only high tier maps you want to do. That's a lot of people will hunt that with, is it this one? Yeah. Um, and hope that they get 84, 85 cluster jewels because a lot of those are pretty expensive. So Delirium, generally high tier maps, I would say. Ritual, also high tier maps because you are very much caring about the bases here. You want things like Blizzard Crowns and you do want those to have high item level. Uh, so I wouldn't do that in low tier maps at all. Betrayal, absolutely okay to do in low tier maps. A really neat trick for low tier map farming and Betrayal is uh, if you take all hands and covert stakeout, you can just like churn through your low tier maps, run in, clear like 40% of the map. If you don't see Betrayal, leave. And it will spawn a large amount. And this is good when you run out of missions. It's 40% chance to contain a random master encounter. And um, you have a 100% increased chance to be done. So it's three times, four times more likely. I'm bad at math. It, it's pretty decent. So I, I really like that in low tier maps. And if you are picking them up, which I think is a really good habit too, because of things like this, uh, then you can just waste like, like, oh, cool. I have five strands or five estuary, five hour run shine. I'll just run through those and spawn some betrayal. This thing, if you do like delving while combining this with intelligence gathering and low level map farming, this will add up even with the 200. Like obviously you do get twice as much uh, and a bit with uh, the red ones, but you are probably, if you're, if you're taking 30 seconds to clear a white map and three minutes to clear a red map, it does add up pretty fast. So if you like delving, keeping that in while doing the, the fast one is very good. So obviously you do miss out on a lot of things by clearing uh, low tier maps. You don't get uh, Elder or Shaper Guardian drops and things like that, but it is very, very good. There are actually quite a lot of people that, um, like lastly, I had somewhere between 10 and 20 people saying that they followed my Essence spam farm advice from last thing and they bought a Mage Blood in like a week. Um, and that might seem crazy to new players, but I think my biggest tip in Path of Exile um, is picking a few mechanics and obsessing over them, like just spamming them, focusing them so hard and not doing anything else. You will be blown away by how much currency you can make. And maybe I can get some veterans echo that sentiment in the comments and uh, like share your experience for like what like changed for you with like, oh, wow, now I'm able to farm a lot of currency. Um, because yeah, just spam farming, like spam farming blight in core 15s or 16s, whatever, or spam farming essence in low tier maps is a great way to make currency. So hopefully this helps you get a little bit of an idea of how to approach things with like what mechanics to combine, what to do in low tier maps, what to do in high tier maps. There are loads of different things to do. I'm sure I've missed something. There's so many things to do in Path of Exile, but I really wanted to make this video because a lot of people... Uh, hadn't thought about the fact that essences don't kick your shit in in tier 1 maps. Now obviously the lead mechanic as well is really nice to do, but can also be very dangerous in high tier maps. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. Hope you guys enjoy it. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.